hell deliver up their dead to be judged at the great white throne judgment of God and whosoever's name is not found written in the Lamb's book of life will be cast into the lake that is burning with fire which is the second death and so whoever overcomes shall not be hurt of the second death Church of Smergamus Pergamus <laughs> Smergamus I don't know where that one is Pergamum Pergamus had a great library uh, Mark Antony uh, gave this library, moved it from Pergamus to uh, Alexandria, Egypt as a gift for his girlfriend, Cleopatra. They say that there were 2,000 volumes in this library in Pergamum. And unto the church in Pergamus write these things, saith he that has the sharp sword with two edges. Now, back in chapter 1, the description of Christ, uh, the word that went forth out of his mouth was like a sharp two-edged sword. So, he that hath the sharp sword with the two edges. I know thy works, and where you dwell, even where Satan's throne is. But you hold fast my name, You've not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against thee, because you have there those that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things that were sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So you have also them that hold to the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, that which Ephesus did not have, Pergamus does have. They began to set up the priesthood over the laity. And again, the Lord declares his hatred of this. His call, repent, or else I will come unto you quickly, and I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth, my word. And he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. To him that overcomes, I'll give to eat of the hidden manna, and give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knows except he that receives it. So unto the angel of the church of Smyrna, Pergamus, getting it mixed up with Smyrna. These things, saith he, the message of Jesus to this church. Again, I know thy works. Now again, going back to Smyrna, remember, he didn't have any uh, condemnation for it. It's going to be suffering. It's going to be uh, a church that is going to experience heavy persecution and martyrdom. As we get to the church of Pergamos, historically, uh, we've come to the reign of uh, Constantine, the uh, Edict of Toleration, and uh, an evil part of the history of the church because you have now the church and the state sort of being joined together under Constantine. And Christianity now becomes the religion of the state, but only because of great compromises that were made. By introducing into the church many of the pagan holidays of Rome, but giving to them sort of Christian names and saying that they were uh, celebrating certain activities of uh, the 
Bible, uh, the birth of Christ and the resurrection and so forth, taking the pagan holidays and Christianizing them, so to speak. There was that compromise with the world in order to gain the favor of the world. During this period of church history, the church really began to decline. It's interesting that persecution really never hurt the church. During the time of persecution, the church grew tremendously because to be a Christian took a true, real commitment. To be a Christian to just be popular and uh, to be a part of a popular movement doesn't make for strong Christians. But where it really cost and a person makes a commitment to Christ, their commitment is solid, it is strong. And so with Smyrna, a strong commitment, dying for their faith. Pergamos, well, different story. I know your works, where you dwell, even where Satan's throne is. And you hold fast my name. And, and you have to admit that they began to hold fast the name of Christ. You've not denied my faith. They hold on to the virgin birth of Jesus and uh, they... Um, Historically, they uh, hold to uh, certain basic doctrines. You've not denied my faith. Even in those days wherein Antipas, my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwells. We don't know who uh, this fellow was or is. Uh, there's nothing about him other than he's mentioned here, Antipas, and uh, he was there in the church of Pergamos and was martyred. But the Lord now again words of condemnation. I have a few things against you. Because you have there those that hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things that were sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. Balaam, an interesting character that I don't understand, but he was brought by King Balak to curse the children of Israel as they were passing through the land of Moab. And as he came ostensibly to receive a great reward from the king by casting a spell or a curse upon the Israelites, he was unable to do so. And he finally confessed, you know, that these are God's people and there's no curse or enchantment that I can bring against them. And so the king, Balak, said, well, you know, I was going to make you a wealthy man but your God has kept you from that wealth. But Balaam was greedy. And he said, now, hold on, let's not get in a hurry here. These people are a special people. They serve the true and the living God. And the God that they serve has really commanded that they have no other gods before him. And though there is no curse that I can bring against them, I'll tell you how you can bring a curse on them. Send your people down to meet them. Let the people invite them into their homes for dinner. As they come into their homes, let the people bring out their little gods and say to them, these are the gods that we worship. Would you like to participate and see how we worship our gods? And lead them in to uh, the 
participating in the worship of